Hi and hello everyone. What we have been seeing so far as uh, are the analysis of closed Jackson network in which uh, we first defined this uh, uh, what is a closed Jackson network or garden naval network. We gave the solution as a product form solution even in this case and the main complexity while computing the joint distribution arises in the computation of the normalization constant which was g of n and to compute the normalization constant in an efficient manner we gave an algorithm which was called as Buzan's algorithm or convolution algorithm because the terms as you can recall that the terms involving in the, in the recursive computation are much like the convolution function. So, that is why this is also called as convolution algorithm. So, all these processes so far whatever we have used right. So, which require computation of this uh, g of n which is the normalization constant. Now, from the normalization constant we get the joint probability distribution and once we have the joint probability distribution we can then obtain marginal distributions and the expected value measures. Okay. So, what we are going to see next is an algorithm which can be employed if you are interested only in the mean value quantities are the expected value measures rather than the joint distributions and marginal distributions right. Uh, so, this is method which is called as this, this procedure is called mean value analysis and the mean value analysis algorithm or MEA algorithm is an approach for calculation of expected value measures directly without uh, involving are uh, computing the normalization con uh, uh, you know constant in case of this convolutional algorithm or directly in a naive computation way if you want to compute the joint probability distribution and hence module distributions. So, what this algorithm will give us is the expected value measures which are mean number in any particular node and the mean sojourn time in, in any particular node is what we are going to compute directly. Okay. So, that is what is called as the mean value analysis which is an approach for calculating the expected value measures directly which is the mean number, mean sojourn time. In fact, certain marginal distributions can also be computed uh, which we can look at it in a simpler settings, but we are not going to look at it. But you know it is possible that you know marginal distributions can also be obtained using this algorithm ok. And this is now we are not computing this normalization constant or state probability distributions in the generality right. Our objective is to compute directly the mean value measures ok. How it does is that it recursively computes by incrementing the number of customers until the desired number of uh, customer is reached which means that you start with 0 customer assuming that 0 customer you do certain computation then with uh, use that idea to you know get the quantities corresponding to 1 customer in the whole of network and 2 customer in the whole of network and so on. So, suppose if your 100 is your number then you increment up to 100 in each step up to 100 steps. So, then you will get at the 100 step you are going to get the required performance measures of the closed queuing network that is under consideration with that 100 customer in this case ok. So, but this is based on two principles and that is the first one is called either the mean value theorem or the arrival theorem ok which we have seen in such scenarios when you have finite source and things like that we have already seen it which is also relevant here. What is that? The queue length observed by an arriving customer is the same as the general time queue length in a closed Jackson network with one less customer. That one less customer is probably himself or herself itself so to say right. So, that is it what? An, in a network with n customer the arrival point probabilities 
of you know finding the system in n is would be the same as the arbitrary time probabilities of finding the system in uh, small n when there are capital n minus 1 customers in the network right. So, this is the what is called as the arrival theorem or the mean value theorem okay. uh, probably is more up easy to remember and appropriate the word arrival theorem because it talks about the arrival uh, and what it sees in the in equilibrium right. This is the first principle that we apply. The second principle that we apply is that Little's formula is applicable throughout the network. I mean, you know, for the you know combined as a network, it's also it is Little's formula is applicable. Okay, and each node also it is applicable. That's what you know we assume. So this is it's now it's happened. So but it's basically these are the two principles on which the algorithm is built upon. Okay. But this algorithm one has to be careful this algorithm applicable only to systems where the service times at each node are exponentially distributed and also at each node follows FCFS discipline. Uh, of course, it can also be expanded to more general queuing disciplines, but you know you have to look at it a little bit more carefully. In certain cases the exact thing will be applicable for example, single server when you have each node even the LCFS discipline you know will be applicable and some other discipline whether it is applicable or not you know there has been if you want more detail or deeper ones then you have to look at that. But we are assuming for simplicity that FCFS discipline for which you know this is applicable here ok. So, that is the mean value algorithms background. Now, the, the, the two principles gives us as basically the, the steps of how to compute the quantities which is mean number and mean sojourn time in a recursive form for each node. Okay. Now, let us look at the first principle which says that which is talked about the arrival theorem. right? So, the queue length observed by an arrival arriving customer right, in an capital N customer node network would be the same as the queue length observed at an arbitrary time with uh, n minus 1 uh, customers in the whole of network right that is what is the case. Now, recall recall for mm1 the w which is the mm, sojourn time in that mm1 q is basically equal to 1 plus l by mu. So, that is what so this is basically 1 by mu plus L by mu right. So, what is the you know sojourn time of an customer there? It is his service time plus the service time of the average number of customers in the system right. That is so if there are L is is the average number of customers in the system each one service time is 1 by mu. So, L times 1 by mu is basically the average time to serve the queue size that he observes at, okay. and plus his own service time which is 1 by mu. This is the expression, but you know you, you, you know the expressions for L and W in this particular case very easily. So, L is rho by 1 minus rho and W is uh, you know 1 by mu times 1, 1 over mu times 1 minus rho right that is what you know you are seeing. So, you can see that you know that satisfies this relationship, but you know one can argue right one can argue also like how and what is the meaning of that relationship is basically you can think of this as 1 by mu plus L times 1 by mu right. And here because in mm1 an equal to p n, so it, it is uh, basically arriving customer or arbitrary time both are one and the same right. But here there is a difference, right? So that's what you know. You need to keep that in mind. And even if this is for MMC, in this case, no adjustment is needed as L is based on with the fact that a n equal to p n, right? Is what is happening in MMC model also. So MMC also this doesn't require any adjustment. But the equivalent condition in our case of this closed network, now we are assuming remember that you know we are not taking the general case we are taking the case where ci equal to 1 here single server node. So, with single server at each node for the equivalence of this in our closed queuing network is basically 
this expression because this is Li right because if you compute from the you know arbitrary time distribution with n minus 1 customer in the node that is what an arriving customer would observe right. So, that is why Wi that is the waiting time of a network with n customer wait you are looking at in the ith node here right with an n customer in the network would be equal to 1 plus the Li of uh, a network with n minus 1 customer right. So, the exact same relationship, but now this one will be with the n customer this will be with the n minus 1 customer because of the fact that this is what you know you are observing because Li you will compute using this and that will be same as you know the Wi that you will compute using this n with n right that is what you are having here. So, this is the mean waiting time at node i for a network with n customer and this mu i is the mean service rate for the single how come this becomes singer? Single server at node i and Li of n minus 1 is the mean number at node y in network with n minus 1 customers as we have seen. So, the first principle which is the arrival theorem gives us this relationship for the closed queuing network. Okay. This is uh, quite easy, but the second principle is what we are assuming that you know it is lies applicable throughout the network that means that Li of n would be equal to lambda i of n times w i of n is what we are taking it right. Now, so if somehow if we can find lambda i of n which is the throughput uh, at node i or the arrival rate at node i with a network with capital N customer, then we have a method of calculating Li and Wi starting with an empty network and building up to a network with capital N customers because Li of 0 is 0 right Li of 0 is 0 when there is 0 customer. So, there is no you know number of customers is 0 and when there is one customer the waiting time is his service time only right. So, you have this now once you have this assuming that my lambda i's are there right. Now, you can see that this relationship this w i n depends on l i n minus 1 right. So, now what I have started with l i of 0 is there w i of 1 of course, you can you are basically getting it from here you can think. Now, once I have w i of 1 from this relationship then I will get l i of 1. Now, once I have L i of 1 here, then I can go to this and then I will get W i of 2. Now, W i of 2 if I have, I substitute it here again and then I will get L i of 2. So, you see here there is a recursive way of computing L i and W i successively until whatever you know the number of customers that n you want. Okay. So, these are basically the two steps that you know you would involve, but then you need to know what is this throughput lambda i of n right if we know that then we can do this ok. So, now how do we compute this lambda i of n right that is what is the main part uh, in this uh, result ok. Now, for which note that ok to we want to compute this lambda i of n. So, for which we define d i of n the, this is the average delay per customer between successive visits to node i for a network with n customer ok. So, it is between what is the average time once it leaves this node i node i what is the average delay to uh, average time it takes to come back to this node again. Then per customer that is right. So, then per customer arrival rate would be as per the laws of conservation it will be 1 over d i of n you have seen in Marco chain and elsewhere to the similar analysis right. Now, since the network has n customer, so the arrival rate right lambda i n would be n over d i of n right. So, this is what you can do. So, if I have this d i of n 
then my lambda i of n is n over d i of n because this is the time it takes. So, per customer arrival rate to the node i is 1 over d i of n and since there are n customers, so this is n over d i of n is what you will get as this lambda i of n. So, now then we have to get this d i of n. Okay. So, how do we get this d i of n? Uh, so, for to do to get the d i of n, we return to our traffic equation which is mu i rho i which is equal to summation you know, mu j rho j times r j i and now we set this mu i rho i because we set rho i as the relative you know utilization and this so mu i rho i would be nu i. So, now this is relative throughput or relative arrival rate. So, where nu so that means that then the equation is basically this if I substitute mu i rho i equal to this v i. Okay. Now, since we know that this set of equations is, uh, line, is a linearly independent system, so you can set one of this nu i equal, equal to 1, say let us take nu l to be 1 and solve for others. We know that this nu i are the relative throughput through node i which is basically nu i is lambda i by lambda l is what is this nu i. Now, once we have this nu i, then we can write this d l of n as the weighted average of the weights that happens in all, all the nodes before it comes back to. So, so this weighted by this nu i which is the relative throughput. Okay. So, basically what we have this is the expression that you know you need to keep that in mind. So, this is the weighted average of the average delays at each node weighted by the relative throughputs which is basically this nu i here okay. or equivalently you can think of this as weighted by the expected number of visits to each node prior to returning to this node normalized node which is L here. L is the normalized node that we are taking because you can think you can imagine this nu i can also be interpreted as the uh, expected number of visits to node i after leaving node l prior to returning to node l. So, now, so this visit count quantities we have not defined for this network, but that is the interpretation that we can give for this. Say for example, if uh, we have a two node network with nu 1 equal to 1 right, and uh, nu 2 equal to 2, then the since the arrival rate at 2 is twice that of node 1 which that is what we call relative throughputs, relative arrival rates. Nu 1 equal to 1, nu 2 equal to 2 means the whatever be the arrival rate is node 1 in arrival rate at node 2 is twice of that. So, the expected number of visits to node 2 after leaving node 1 and prior to returning to node 1 must also be 2 that is why that is when you know that is how it will be satisfying this, right. So, once we have this nu i. So, that means that d l of n I can compute, then I can compute this quantity is lambda i of n. So, the lambda i of n I can we can compute. This is the background behind this uh, algorithm. So, now we can write it down the algorithm. Many a time like algorithm is directly written, but you can uh, give a little bit of understanding at of what is the step that you are involved. So, this is called MVA algorithm. The objective is you are finding the expected value measure in a k node single server per node network with routing probability matrix as usual r. What we have the traffic equations nu i which we have written down now for the relative throughput and you set one of these nu i say nu l equal to 1 and solve for the remaining nu i's from this set of equations. You initialize this to this l i of 0 is 0 right. Now, for n is equal to 1 to n you repeat these steps a b c d ok this is the repeat steps. So, the first one is l i of 0 you have initiated. Now, for n is equal to 1 then you will compute w i 1 which is 1 by mu i for each of these 1 to k nodes right w 1 of 1 w 2 of 1 w 3 of 1 and so on you will compute that will be equally 1 by mu 1 or 1 by mu 2 1 by mu 3 and so on. Once we have that then you compute the lambda l of n right basic based upon this that is for the normalized node that you are picking it up right. So, assuming that nu l equal to 1 now corresponding to that 
L you compute lambda L of n which is n over this quantity right which is what we have just seen that you know this is what is your d L of n small n and this is n is the now the in this particular step for n is equal to 1 n is the number of customers in the whole of network. So, this is the arrival rate of the the normalized node that we are picking it up then we know that e lambda i is basically nu i times because nu i is basically lambda i by lambda l. So, lambda i is equal to lambda l times nu i. Now, once I get this lambda i n then I can use the second principle that we have used. So, the first principle is used in A, the second principle is used actually in D to lead to D we are computing B and C the steps. Okay. So, lambda i n w i n. So, lambda i n once I compute then I will get this w i n uh, from step A I plug it in I will get lambda i n this is for n is equal to 1. Now, that is for that means that you are computing for one customer. Now, n is equal to 2 which means that you are computing for n is equal to 2 customer with the corresponding w i n and l i n because that is what you know. So, this is how you iterate until up to capital N which is the objective that you know you wanted to compute with capital of N customers in the network. So, this is what is the MVA algorithm in a single server node network that is what you know we are seeing it here. Now, we can take up the previous uh, example, but with a slight modification because okay, there we have assumed two machines. If you go recall the examples that we have considered earlier, which is basically the, this diagram if you can recall. So, now we have assumed two machines and then there is local repair, specialist repair. Uh, now, we will assume this one, rep one machine here that is the change that we will make. So, that this will become a single server at each node network. Okay. But the values that we will pick it up is again the same value, right? So, which will have this G2, and if you want to compute, so this is all you will get exactly the same. So, this is what you know you will get here, okay? Now, with that understanding, with that understanding that you know we will take up the same example two machine, three node network, but now with one machine. So, it becomes a one machine, three node network. So, the traffic equation then is nu is equal to nu times this r, r is this matrix for the values that we have assumed. Uh, we will choose nu 2 equal to 1, when we solve for rho, rho also we pick that rho 2 equal to 1 and we obtain the other one. So, in a similar way rho nu 2 equal to 1 we pick it up which is means L is 2 here in this particular case. That is what we are picking it as one of the nodes as normalizing nodes. So, that is L what, what we are denoting it. So, nu 1 is 4 by 3, nu 3 is 2 by 3. So, which means this is a relative throughput means if nu 2 for nu 2 the if arrival is happening at the rate 1, then for nu 1 it is 4 by 3 times of the corresponding arrival rate in nu 2, right. That is what we are calling it as 4 by 3 and 2 by 3 of this measure, okay. So, now for i is equal to 1 to 3 and n is equal to n equal to 1, now here there is only one customer because there is only one machine. So, there is only one customer. So, now capital N is also equal to 1. So, we need to apply this algorithm for only one step. Okay. So, from the first step of course, we have the initialization condition as L 1 of 0 is 0. right? So, the first step is W with, with bracket 1, right? W 1 of 1, W 2 of 1, W 3 of 1 because there is 3 nodes. So, L 1 of 0 and the first node it is lambda is the rate. So, lambda was 2. So, w 1 of 1 is 1 by 2, w 2 of 1 is basically 1 by mu 2 which is 1, w 3 of 1 is basically 1 by mu 3 because this is L 1 of 0, L 2 of 0, L 3 of 0, all of them are zeros, right. So, this is 1 by 3 because mu 3 is 0. Now, lambda 2 of 1 we can compute once we have this w's. So, and we have this news from here, new i's and w i's you have. So, you can compute now lambda 2 of 1 as 9 by 17 and hence lambda 1 of 1 is 12 by 17 and lambda 3 of 1 is 6 by 17. Now, once we have these two then I can now compute L 1 of 1 which is lambda 1 of 1 W 1 of 1 which is 6 by 17. So, L 2 of 1 which is lambda 2 of 1 and W 2 of 1. So, lambda 2 of 1 is this and W 2 of 1 is this. So, that will give me 9 by 17. L 3 of 1 
in a similar way is 2 by 17. Now, since in, in this particular case n is equal to 1, we are done. Okay. That is what uh, you have in this scenario. Okay. So, this is so you can now obtain the the Wi's and mu li's in, in each node in this network, but single server case. So, now recall. Uh, you can verify whether this result is true by you know a verification process right because you know already the joint distribution right so the solution of the traffic equation was row 1 so we assumed their row 2 equal to 1 so row 1 was 2 by 3 row 3 was 2 by 9 again this is relative to this row 2 right if row 2 is 1 then row 1 is 2 third of row row 2 and row 3 is 2 ninth of that that's what we have right so, then P of n1, n2, n3 was 1 over g of 1, 2 by 3 to the power n1 and 2 by 3 to the power n3 was the joint distribution. So, that implies, right. So, what are the number, possible number of states? It is 3 uh, node single customer. So, the customer could be either in node 1 or node 2 or node 3. So, the possible states are 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 1. These are the only 3 possible states. And for each of this, you can compute this quantities. So, for 1, 0, 0, this will be simply 2 by 3 divided by g of 1. And for the 0, 1, 0, it will be 1 over g of 1. And for the other third one, which is 0, 0, 1, it is 2 by 9 divided by g of 1 is what you will get as the joint distribution. Then these 3 must sum to 1. If you compute g1, then g1 will turn out to be 17 by 9. Now, once we have this 17 by 9, then you know that 2 by 3 by 17 by 9 will give you this, right? And this is uh, you know 1 over g of 1, so it is basically 9 by 7, and this is 2 by 17. And which from here we can now compute this L1, L2, L3, right? What is L1, L2, L3? See, in this particular case, it is just 1. So, it is basically, you know, 1 with this probability, 0 with this probability, 0 with this probability to get at uh, the number in system or uh, number in node 1, right, which will turn out to be simply 6 by 17. And similarly, for L2, 9 by 17 and uh, the probability itself is turning out to be that because there is only one customer in the system and there is only this many states. So, this is corresponding to that probability. So, that is the average number also, uh, right. Now, once I have this, now lambda 1s, I can lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, I can, I can have already computed this, right. Now, I can use Little's law again to get this W, which is L by lambda, right. So, I can get this w's which is 1 by 2, 1 and 1 by 3 from this, from this joint distribution. Now, you see from the joint distribution from here, I can obtain these l's. It is simple here, it is not a complex here, but you know in a more complex situation, obtaining this is not very easy because you know obtaining this g of this is not easy. But if you wanted to compute uh, the joint distribution at any cost, you have no choice, you have to compute it, right. But if you are interested only in the mean values, then one can directly apply the MB algorithm, which might which be very simple to apply because you are directly computing the uh, mean values directly here, right. This is a verification that you can do, you can look at it, okay. Now, this algorithm can also be used to get the marginal distributions, but we are not looking at that part. But what we can, we will just state it along similar line is that what is the MV algorithm in the multi server case, okay, this is the more general one that you can take. Now, to do that we need to define two other notations, of course, this alpha ij you already know, but we are just giving this notation, but there is one another quantity which is p i of j comma n, which is the marginal probability of j in at node i in an n customer system. So, the total number of customers in the network is small n and at node i the number of customers is j, what is the probability? This is the marginal probability that we are denoting, okay. And this alpha i j is basically in the ith node, what is this quantity j, which is j and c of i, which you will know that, okay, this is connected with this MMC model, like the for the recursive p k plus 1 and p k, if you connect it, you will have lambda by 
sum quantity times mu that sum quantity is what this either j or c depending upon whether c j is less than c or greater than c right. So, this is that quantity this is a notation ok these are the two things that we get. Now, here what objective is again this but now c a servers at node i with road this again you have the, this traffic equation remain the same that does not change anything. So, setting one of this which say nu l equal to 1 you have to solve it. Now, your initialization condition is not just this the li of 0 is 0 you had it for single server also, but now you have additionally these conditions as part of the initialization process which is p i of 0 0 equal to 1 p i of j comma 0 for j not equal to 0 right. We are seeing this must be equal to 0 because total number of customers 0 and you find j uh, customer in the node it has to be 0 right. So, this is 0 when there is 0 but finding probability 0 in system is 1 that is what you know you are getting it here ok. These are the initial conditions or the initial starting condition or such. Now, again you will repeat here, but now the change that you will make is basically in this step and in the last step because that is what naturally will happen ok. So, here you do not change, but this additional step that you will come back to that ok. So, in this step what is the change because now there is not one customer or one server here it is C A number of servers right. So, this is essentially you know deri derived based upon that, but if you want to look at more you can refer to the text it is just a simple argument that you know how you arrive at this expression ok. So, that is uh, basically uh, depends on let me quickly see. So, that is basically depends on suppose if you have uh, you know C A servers at node i and then if you have you know j minus c i plus 1 customer with the corresponding probabilities given by this then this wait uh, waiting time. So, that is the number in the system it will become the l i that l would be replaced by that quantity and with that simple little algebra then you will arrive at this expression. But now what we are seeing here is that this is actually a marginal distribution right. But even in this multi server case in single server case we did not require this marginal distribution in the computation of this w i s and k. But in the case of multi server system ok this is required. So, up to c j minus 2 or c i minus 2 for at each node up to that you know you need this quantities in order to you know compute this w it is not just on l i of n minus 1 you also need the marginal distribution some marginal distribution value. So, that is what you know one would compute here in a recursive manner again that that will be involved in this. So, that is the main step here. So, the main step that requires modification is in the computation of w i when you are going for multi server case and that would lead to this expression here that we have written down ok. So, this is what is the once you have done then the remaining steps of the original a b c d steps are remain the same, but now since this is required with you know for example, in this when you are to compute with n customer in the network you need this p j with n minus 1. So, you have to compute right. So, you start with 0 now when you do this 1 then p j 1s are needed to compute in p j 2s. So, the w i 2s right. So, you so this is basically the relationship lambda i by either j times mu i or c times mu i depending upon where this uh, you know the j is right. So, that is what is this relationship this is the usual recurrence relationship in an MMC model between the steady state probabilities of being in state k and state k plus 1 there is nothing here beyond that ok it comes from there ok. But one can easily show that also this is true in single server case and multi server case and so on. But whatever it is this is the algorithm now with this algorithm you can now take it up the original problem that example that we have considered which is basically two machine and three node. Uh, problem right close network example. Now, you can apply this one to get the mean number of uh, w i's and l i's from this. So, that is what it happened. So, you can again by computing joint distribution also we have already computed 
right now you can compute uh, you can do the verification of the result also from the joint distribution joint distribution is already computed you do not need to compute it again right but from there marginal distributions and then the corresponding LIs and WIs you can compute and you can match with this MVA algorithm whatever value that you are given you can just do ok. So, this is all about MVA that we are going to see we are not going to go beyond this uh, level, uh, but you know we may end with uh, you know what can be said about these uh, three processes the brute force or naive computation of G directly and the convolution algorithm and the MVA algorithm. As you have seen all three methods are easy for small problems right for smaller k, smaller n it is always possible that any of these you use you do not have problem at least for our pen and paper calculation that we do all three methods are actually one and the same. So, you really did not feel the need of these two things right one can do directly a naive computation with two customer three customer three node two node four node like you can always do this computation very easily it is not a problem at all. But basically like they, they but in reality that is not the case right. So, you have to implement it with large number of uh, nodes or large number of customers or both that is what we call simply as larger network. In that case this Bujans and MVA algorithm or the convolution algorithm and MVA algorithm are computationally far superior over the naive computation with respect to efficiency which is in terms of storage and speed and the stability for larger problems uh, numerical errors and all other stuff you can put together. For larger problems these are computationally far superior ok. But between these two if you want to compare right what would be the best or better. Now for a single server at all node network like the case that we first consider within, within this MVA. MVA is superior if we want only the mean waiting times and mean system size at each node. We do not want the state distributions right. If you want only the mean then this is superior, but if you want there either the joint marginal distributions or even, even if you want only the mean, but you have multi server nodes right or if you want marginal probability distributions it is not clear you know how much is better if it is really better maybe in some situations MVA you know might be better in some other situation convolution procedure might be better that is depends on, on the situation and what kind of things that you want and so on ok. So, and hence both of these are essential in order to have a complete understanding of the closed queuing network or the garden naval network that we have seen in this case. So, naive or brute force approach is applicable easy in case of very small networks, but larger networks since it is not clear which one will do better in which situation because it, you can always find a case where this is better than this, this has performed better than the other one uh, in the kind of network that one, one, one has analyzed. So, it is not clear since it is not clear that you know it is which one is better. So, it is always better that you know about both, but a, a, a crude way is that if you are interested only in mean and mean values you can directly go for mean value algorithm rather than computing the convolution process. Convolution process gives you that G of n right, but product form is there. G of n only you need it. So, that one in alone you can compute through convolution process ok. But if you only want mean directly go for MVA algorithm that is what you know normally one can one would do ok. So, we will end our discussion on closed queuing network this type of closed queuing network uh, now like we will take up a bit a bit more on these ideas in the following lectures ok. Thank you bye.